Tochi Onobuchi continues the Cold War this issue as the captains run into a bit of trouble with Dimension Z invading Alaska, upping the stakes of their battle a little more by adding civilians into the mix that they now have to protect. The real winner of this issue however was the Bucky and Ian mind game session in the final pages, with Bucky falling into the classic trope of a villain offering the hero a kind of way out and an offer for something they really want. Tochi upends everything though and throws it back in Bucky's face by having Ian not not buy into it at all and kind of throw the questions back at him, at which Bucky has no idea on how to answer. It made Bucky further question the way he's going about taking down the inner circle, and I love that it also plays on the idea that both Bucky and Ian are both, in a way, Captain America's sons. You know, Bucky was always treated as Steve's partner, but also his son or younger brother sort of role, so I like them getting a chance to bounce off each other, since they haven't really done all that much interaction up until now. The Black Widow reveal at the end was also a really super surprising addition and I'm really looking forward to Natasha being thrown in as an unknown element in this big game between the Caps and Bucky. RB Silver's lovely artwork really played to both the heavy action in the front half of the book with some fantastic set pieces and great use of the snowy environment and the back half which was all character driven. I love Silver's visual representation of Bucky behind the red prison bars on one of the pages. Visually signposting the character is stuck in his own sort of prison by being forced to go against Cap and playing the game the circle has got him trapped in. It's just wonderfully visual storytelling. Captain America Symbol of Truth issue 12 was a surprisingly character focused portion of Cold War that had its fair share of action but really shined during the one on one between Bucky and Ian in the end. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Captain America Symbol of Truth issue 12 sees Sam tell Steve that no matter what justification he gives, Bucky broke a war criminal out of prison and gave him an army of interdimensional monsters, so he's gotta go down. Misty thinks they should figure out the problem in front of them first as more of the Tithe agents begin to surround them. Steve tells Sam that he believes that he can get through to Bucky, despite what Sam thinks. But Sam is unsure that Steve has seen what the White Wolf is capable of as Misty asks Sharon if they plan on breaking the two men up before they begin begin to fight each other. Sharon thinks they need a moment, wanting to go and fight the Tithed instead. The Tithed agents and Frox generals arrive, so the captains put their conversation on hold to deal with them. Misty meanwhile laments how she prefers it when the Tithed agents were fighting each other, as Sharon thinks about power and money and must be having quite the conversation up on the Shadow Capital for their forces to join together to fight them. She thinks there's way too many of them for them to deal with, since as Misty puts it, it's only a matter of time before the battle reaches a town or city. Sharon remembers the last time she was there and how there were people there, however they've all seemed to have disappeared. Steve and Sam meanwhile continue to battle with General Horde Killer and General Rutgash, who proclaim the Wolf King will feast on their blood. Sam feels a sense of deja vu, knowing this team up feels like it did when they took down the Zola rocket in New York. Sam saves Steve from the crumbling ground, launching him at the tired agents as Sam calls into Misty and Sharon, telling them of their situation with the generals. Misty wants to go and regroup as Sharon falls down a hidden mine shaft in the ground. Misty goes after her as Sam tells Steve what's happened to Sharon, causing Steve to race off to save her, and Sam covers him, unleashing a shockwave from his wings that causes men to be blown back. Steve leaps down the mine shaft, and Sam speeds after him as the tithed agents begin blasting the mine opening, sealing it behind the heroes. Sam grabs Steve before the falling rocks smash into him as Sharon reunites with them, revealing that the mine is full of refugees who used to live in the town above the mine. That is, until the Tithe agents arrived and turned their town into a war zone, destroying it completely. Sam believes that he doomed them by blocking the tunnel, but the men assure him that they have other tunnels built into the mine systems, which they can use to get out when the fighting has passed. Sam intends to make things right for the people, but Steve believes there is only one way to do that, by going to Dimension Z. Sam knows full well that Steve wants to go there because his son is there, reminding him that Ian isn't their priority right now, but Steve tells him that the Frocks came through the portals that led back to Dimension Z and White Wolf brought them to Mohanda the same way. And these portals could be opening all over the world, so they must fix that first. And besides, Ian is his son. Ian meanwhile is approached by Bucky, who asks the boy if he still loves his father despite what has happened. Ian doesn't buy into Bucky's games, knowing that he's 
she's trying to make him feel like a lost kid again. Bucky asks if he feels anything at all being brought back to Dimension Z, asking if the place ever called to him or if he ever felt like he wasn't an exile there. Ian doesn't think he was an exile and calling himself Nomad wasn't by accident. Ian turns it around on Bucky, asking him where his home is and where he goes when he wants to feel like he belongs or feel loved. Bucky doesn't answer and Ian knew he wouldn't, but Bucky does ask Ian what if home is where they go to find purpose, citing how Ian lived most of his life in Dimension Z and how much of a hellscape it was, but it doesn't need to be anymore, asking if the boy wants to fix it. Ian thinks that that's what Wife Wolf thinks he's doing now, but Bucky hopes that the boy will trust him in this. Ian turns his back on Bucky and so he leaves the cell, and upon leaving, Bucky is captured by the Black Widow, who demands that he tell her everything and if he holds anything back, she will slit his throat. <laughs>